Hi, my name's Linda and 2021 saw me take my passion and uh, my hobby for my garden and turn that into a small business where I sell fresh seasonal cut flowers. So I don't only have a dedicated cut flower patch, but I'm fortunate enough to have a large garden of my own and have and be able to grow fruit and vegetables. I don't just have a dedicated vegetable patch. I do grow my vegetables in among my flowers. And at the moment, this is mid July. We have been having quite um, a prolonged spell of dry weather, which has been great for my garlic and onion harvests and storage. So I have been allowing them to stay dry up in the ground uh, before I bring them out. But as I'm using those, uh, saving some for myself, giving some away, I'm able to plant flowers back into the, their spaces. So I'm planting in dahlias, some calendula, some nasturtium, and there's a whole range of other plants like cosmos and zinnias that you could be planting into the ground as you're harvesting some of your vegetables at this time of the year. Today I'm going to take you through growing what I think is one of the most versatile um, fruits to grow, also possibly the tastiest and the cheapest, and that is strawberries. I grow mine in hanging baskets and that is purely for um, space saving. I'm able then to grow some indoors and outdoors. In fact, I hang my baskets off my washing line. Um, yes, I'm able to grow some indoors, some outdoors, and I'm also growing different varieties. I have ones in a basket here, which are, they trail out over the sides. So there's four in a basket, whereas then I have one here. This is more upright, so there's only one in the center of the basket. But, but by growing them indoors and outdoors, I'm able to extend my harvest. So strawberries, flower and fruit anywhere from May right through to August. So it's quite, it's quite a short window, but they are very delicious and um, they can be eaten morning, noon and night, breakfast, snacks, desserts and they're also, when I say cheap, is that they produce runners, so you're able to make um, more plants for free. Strawberries now, you can order bare root throughout the season, and those are generally delivered in autumn. And you'll have to pot those into nine centimetre pots to grow them on for the following spring. Or you can pick up plants in garden centres and nurseries uh, at springtime and then plant them into your baskets, containers or beds outside. Strawberries are winter hardy and would only need protected if we had very extreme weather and by that a piece of fleece, a blanket, um, a cloche, anything just to protect the crown and it's more from continuous rain than it is frost. If you're looking a soft fruit to pick up after the strawberry, a good option is an autumn fruiting raspberry. Autumn fruiting raspberries are shorter than their summer counterparts, therefore they don't need as intensive staking. Um, just a, a TP would do the job perfect or even one steak and tying it in. But autumn fruiting ones, yes, they would pick up the batten after the strawberries and they're also very easy to look after in that they flower and fruit on new wood. So that means when you have everything harvested, then they can be chopped down to 20 centimetres above ground level and then they will regrow for the following year. Whereas a summer raspberry only flowers on old wood. So you would have to let, you know, your new shoots, you'd have to be very careful not to prune them out because they are what carry the fruit for the following year. I have been doing an experiment this year with my strawberries where I have grew four 
in this basket and one in this basket so that I can check out their performance and their yield. And what that means is, is just to see whether one on its own, being able to get all the nutrients and the water and not fighting with anything else. As you can see, it's got a very large strawberry, ripe strawberry. Or if four, so these four then technically will be battling it out against each other for all the nutrients and the water that is in the basket. So I want to be able to compare the yields and both of these strawberries have been staying outside. I have been growing this one here inside. As you can see, the leaves are not just as luscious as the outdoor ones. I think this is because of uh, the warm, the extremely warm weather we have been having. It has been up to 50 degrees in my polytunnel now for the last three to four weeks. This is mid-July. So I think for again, if it gets so warm, I would be looking to take these down and take put them outside or at least bring them down onto my shelf where there'll be just a little bit more shade. This one here I've been growing inside as well. As you can see, there are lots of the flowers have been pollinated and uh, are producing fruit. One of the things about growing fruit in your polytunnel indoors is that you do need to have flowers to attract, as you can see, <laughs> to attract insects in so they can pollinate. Some of the flowers that I grow in my polytunnel to aid pollination of my fruit and veg are nasturtium, calendula, and as you can see, my calendula, we have a bee. Um, not quite sure what these insects are here. And I also have some marigolds as well. So here, I'm not sure of the variety. This one's very large. And then I have um, smaller ones down here as well. And I have these with my aubergines, my courgettes, and this here is a cucumber. I'm not sure if I have any small. So look, here's a small cucumber with its flower. So hopefully they're all being pollinated and the insects are traveling from the male flowers down to the female ones. These are the baskets that I use. You can see that they have holes to pop your plants through. You push out that insert there and then you're able to slot your plant in through. What I would recommend doing is line your basket. Some I have lined with basket liners and I, find, I do find these the best. Um, so they can be picked up at garden centres, nurseries, places like Pine Stretcher and B&M Bargains. So they are proper basket liners and they will have little slits here. You can sort of see where that's uh, a slit there. And you'll be able to poke your plant out through there. Times where I have ran out, I have just placed, chopped up a piece of my of a compost bag and actually I've turned it around so that the black is what's showing out and I have placed, placed that and again just make a hole or sometimes I've just placed the plastic bag over the holes that are not being used for fruit so for example in this one here so you can see that there is roots there but on the hole, on the planting hole that has not been used, I have it covered up so that no, the water is not um, just pouring out of this gap. 
So I'm going to demonstrate planting up a strawberry through here. I've covered up the holes that I'm not using. I have added some multi-purpose compost and slow release feed into my basket. Strawberries are, they are heavy feeders and will need fed once a week when they start to flower with a liquid seaweed feed. They do have shallow roots which makes them good to grow anywhere um, because the roots are always near the surface which does make them good for hanging baskets for the small space but they will need fed once a week. What I'm going to do is just show you that you just, you know, you slot it through. Now this plant will actually be larger than what you would buy as a nine centimeter pot. I had this one growing outside and it, it just wasn't performing well. I had it at the base of a potted apple tree. So it just, it just wasn't performing well. So there we are. It's just pushed through the slot. Then take this. Now you'll see this is where the root mass will be or where the stems will all be even. And you just push that down on top. And there we go. So that's us. And then fill up with compost. And if you want to put any more plants in, I would advise that, um, you know, if you don't have many other flowers in your garden, it would be beneficial to put in um, something that will attract the pollinators for you. I had mentioned earlier that strawberries are probably one of the cheapest fruits to grow because they produce runners. So in other words, they multiply themselves and create new plants. In this basket here, I have found three runners. So I've got two at this side and I've just gently lifted out their roots to be able to show you today. So there is one, there is one. So I just um, replant them afterwards. But with runners, you are sacrificing fruit. So the energy will go into making these new plants so my best advice would be in your first year of growing strawberries you want to cut off all of the runners so you would want to cut these off right down into the base so that your plant produces the one plant itself produces its own roots and fruit then in the second year let one or two of your plants create runners so that then you can get new plants and then in your third year you should have a really good bumper crop of strawberries from that original plant i mean first and second year you still will have strawberries i mean this is a first year plant for me these ones here and you can see there there will be a decent harvest of that one plant so what you would do is you would let them grow on and then come autumn time, then you would snip this off here and take it away from the parent plant and carefully dig out around here so that then you would have a new plant and all its roots. I think I have one here that has grew out over the side and you can see just tiny little nodules there that is where this plant that's where this runner would set down roots that's how you know that it is a runner and that it can grow roots you can sort of see it just runs out like there is another one there that I have just gently lifted up so you're able to see the roots so come autumn time I will let this one produce these runners and come autumn time I will cut it here from its parent and gently dig out around here so then this plant has its own root system but for this one here what you can do is bring your hanging basket 
pop it on a bench. Take some compost in a pot and allow the root, the runner, the runner and its root to come over and touch the compost. Now this one needs just to grow a little bit longer. That's what makes, I guess, this is one of the drawbacks of growing in hanging baskets. It makes collection of runners more difficult. If this was in the ground, you would just let these run out and um, run the length of wherever they're going to go. And then come autumn time, just cut them off, but let them grow where they are. Whereas here, I can't let them grow in the basket because it would become very congested. So I'm going to have to dig out my new plant. But you can also try this method here, that if your runner is longer and hanging over your basket, you bring your compost to it in a pot and then just pin it down so that the nodes are in contact with the soil. And you should have a new plant. So I hope you find uh, today's video useful on planting strawberries, be that indoors or outdoors. Just um, one of the things to remember is that strawberries are shallow rooted, so they will dry out quickly. So you do need to keep an eye on watering. If you are growing them outside or in a garden bed, I do recommend mulching with straw. That will keep your fruits lifted up and protected from slugs and from any um, any water because you don't want them rotting away. You want them all for yourself to be able to enjoy. And then one of the other things is when it's in a hanging basket, definitely line the basket because that also prevents water loss. And make sure you are feeding them weekly when they start to flower because that will help to produce more flowers and tastier fruit because whenever you're watering more often your nutrients will all uh, be washed away so you do need um, to give them a good feed once a week with uh, a seaweed feed when they do start to bloom so I hope you enjoyed today I'm going to pick my uh, strawberry and have that for a snack now and I hope you are able to grow your own strawberries too So now I'm going to take a few moments and show you some photos from my vegetable patch. Most of them will be from last year, so from season 2020. I've had quite a disastrous year this year in um, 2021. The weather uh, just hasn't been on my side. It was very cold and damp um at the time and wet at the time when seeds should have been germinating and anything that has survived um hasn't necessarily survived this uh heat wave at the moment so um most of my photos will be from 2020 but i do hope that you enjoy seeing some of the vegetables that i have been growing and i hope this inspires you to grow some too